Howdy again, it's Tubal Cain in a rare screen appearance standing here next to my Bridgeport Mill in my basement shop. And I've had many requests or uh, inquiries over the years as to how I got this Bridgeport Mill into the basement. And believe me, it was no easy job and that was long before I had a video camera. I still was in my prime, of course and had a great deal of strength. I was not emaciated and reduced to this uh, mere shell of my former self. But uh, I had the help of a bunch of young men moving this down. And uh, again, it's about 1,800 pounds. So since I had no video camera at the time, this goes back to the days of film. And my uh, wonderful wife did take uh, about a dozen Kodak pictures. So I will show you those and narrate them and uh, as to what was happening in attempting to move this thing down into the basement. My basement does not have a low, whole lot of headroom, especially when you deduct the, the ducting work. Uh, although this is a return error here, but there's approximately four inches here between the top of the motor and, and the sheet metal up here. So uh, there, there I even had to uh, use a short drawbar. I had a longer drawbar, but there was no room here to even uh, tap it with a hammer, or I had to reach so high. So uh, you can see that I have confined space in here. I know that a lot of you suffer with uh, small shops, and, and I certainly do. I am not far from the stairs from whence it came down, right here. And believe me, I had the stairs uh, all shored up with uh, two by fours and two by sixes and everything because the weight of the machine, which of course was disassembled, uh, and the weight of six or eight guys on the stairs is considerable and I'm sure it would have collapsed. And there is only two stringers here. There is no third stringer in the middle, which you'd think would give it more support. Remember, this is not a, this is just a residential uh, building. It is not commercial. I have moved a lot of heavy equipment up and down that stairs and remember what Atlas said that he could move the entire world if he had a large enough lever and a fulcrum to uh, use with the lever. And I moved a lot of this by myself across the room simply with rollers, one inch pipe or I prefer 5 8 rod and a pry bar and at my 155 pounds I can move a very heavy machine I've done it so many times but the reason I'm over here on this side of the shop here is that I had considered over 20 years ago of opening up this entire wall here because there's a window from the outside having it dug out and a uh, walls put in place and a stairs and a door in here because I had moved so much machinery in and out and possibly a, an A-frame type hoist to lower it and a stairs that was rem removable. But now I'm way beyond that, but that's a consideration. And if I had it to do over, I would do that. This digital readout did not come with it. That was a later acquisition, but let me retrace the steps here, literally. Here are the stairs. And holding the camera free hand now, you can count the footsteps. Of course, I removed the door, removed this door, and I think I probably removed the storm door here. And certainly I had removed this rail, and when I installed it years ago, I had put the uh, screws here so I can easily take this railing on and off. Hey, Sharon! Now, later in this video, I'm going to talk about the pedigree or where I got this machine and a few others. But uh, in this video, which was going to be a two-minute one, actually is going to end up to be 20 minutes as I do one of my uh, marathons here, I guess you could say. Uh, filibuster is what I meant to say. But this this had to come apart. The entire machine came apart into its basic pieces. So some of this was real easy. That is, I removed the motor. Then I removed the head itself, which was fairly easy when you got help. And you've seen me do that in a, in a video. Then the RAM. That's not light. Then uh, this, I think, is called the turret. I, I, I believe that was the turret. I forgot some of the names. 
And then, of course, the entire column here is hollow, but still weighs 800 pounds. Of course, the vise came off, and then the table, and then the uh, saddle, which you can't see from this view. Then the knee, which is not exactly lightweight. I'm not even going to describe how I did all of that. And it's, <laughs> to be honest with you, I forgot on some of that. Because I did that all alone. I must have had a hoist or a sky hook or something. And then I removed this. So now we were down to uh, the column here. And I'm going to show you pictures of us moving that. In the years before I bought this milling machine, I actually wanted to buy a South Bend milling machine. I had one at the school, and my brother had them, and they had them at K&K &K Engineering, where my brother worked in Bloomington. And what we liked about them is that the uh, column and the base were two separate castings with the column bolted to the base, and it would be so easy to move in comparison to this, but I never ran across one for sale. But I'm going to show you some pictures here in a little while of a South Bend and, and how they were made and how uh, beautiful that would be to move one of those because this is not a job for the faint-hearted. I'm now sitting at my computer and I'm at Keith Rucker's wonderful site called Vintage Machinery. Go to that if you never have, but I found the page here, I think it's the 1960 catalog, South Bend, and I'm looking at this wonderful South Bend milling machine and that I had at the school. This is a little bit older model, and notice that in the earlier model they used a quick change gearbox from the lathe loosely adapted as the power feed but by the time I got when it came with that servo that was on the end that was so uh, terribly sensitive and the kids would tear it up but the reason I'm showing you this is that th this would be an ideal one to find if you could uh, I don't think they made many of them you can see the coolant there but the reason we had these is they were a little cheaper than the Bridgeport, and at that time, in the late 60s, you absolutely could not get a Bridgeport. There was a waiting list for them. So th this is why we got them, although we had a heck of a time with the school budgets because if the first year I was there, they needed new football helmets and uh, jerseys. The second year, they needed backboards for the uh, glass backboards for the gym, and it went on and on and on, and of course, well... Uh, Enough on that. But notice here, if you will, that the construction here is such that the base casting here is separate from the column and it was bolted together from the bottom. So that would be so easy to take apart and to move in comparison to the bridge port. And that, that's really the only reason I'm showing you this. And it came with a complete line of. Uh, uh, accessories as well and you know this picture here I had lifted out of their catalog and I used it in for many years in the school I blanked these out and uh, and that was my quiz on the parts for the South Bend mill and there's the accessories that was a a palm grin vice that I had I like those but boy are they heavy there's all the accessories oh there's their little shaper okay on with the show. Let me tell you first from this photo album where these milling machines came from and this is uh, the day that I brought them home and had just taken them off the trailer and yet there was still a third milling machine, a clausing, and I'll show you a picture of that in a minute. So I bought three milling machines from Joliet Township High School and they had closed a high school. That's about 60 miles from here. They had closed, I think it was Joliet uh, East and all of the machinery was moved to Joliet Central. That's that big high school that looks like a castle if you've ever been in Joliet. But they had a vocational building and all of this equipment was uh, for sale and it was like a silent auction. That is the uh, the equipment was posted at Caterpillar where my son worked at the time there in Joliet and you had to bid on it. Now since I didn't know which one I was going to win, I bid on three of them and of all things I got all three of them at a very reasonable cost. Apparently it wasn't well advertised and you know I was one of the few bidders. And I, 
and I had to pay a man with a car hauler to, to bring these home for me but that's what they look like on the rollers that I talked about and from there on once those uh, my brother and my buddy Chet left I was on my own and I moved those in and out of the garage and trying to decide what I'm going to do with them or how I'm going to uh, get them in the basement and there it is in the garage actually there's two of them there if you can see this other one in the background and I was trying to decide which one to keep because I intended then at that point to sell one and I did and I, I don't remember how I advertised or, or whatever but when it was moved out of here uh, a wrecker came the man paid for a wrecker they hoisted it and put it on those two uh, things that come out of the back of the wreck or whatever you call those that go under the wheels chained it to that and that's the way it left and was moved here in town by that method just for the cost of the of the wrecker or like a towing which was I think fairly reasonable this is a similar picture with a backdrop and uh, I think that that is a palmgren uh, vice on there that I got rid of or, or I sold it with the other one I forgot and I had cleaned up the machine at that point. Now looking down here, at this, this is the closing horizontal mill and I really wanted this badly in my basement but there just wasn't any good way to get this apart without just major major work and I decided then to sell it but I really do wish I had it. It was in perfect condition. These machines were all three phase of course but it's long gone and here we are 19 years ago and that's Tubal Cain right there and my son-in-law and Tommy my neighbor and, and uh, one of my boys and all of their friends uh, and we are moving the column you're probably not going to be able to tell here but this is the column and that was literally just moved up by uh, sheer manpower once the column was moved through the doorway you can see the chains here I fastened a chain onto the base and there were planks by the way on the stairway and I used my John Deere B to restrain it as it was slowly and methodically moved down the stairway without anyone being killed and this guy Dave I called him heavy was a big help because he was just a big strong guy and probably 18 years old at the time and there's all of my pry bars that Atlas told me to use blocking but I suggest you don't try this at home if over 10,000 people watch this video I'll show how I moved some other equipment that I bought uh, a few years later this was the first really big machine that I had in the basement so there was plenty of room to work down here and to reassemble this thing uh, after it was actually in the basement and I worked all alone on this for probably a, <coughs> a week or so, cleaning it up thoroughly. Uh, there was no rust on it, but you know there were signs of vandalism and and uh, nicks on it and all of that from the being in a high school. And it was filthy dirty, so I got it all clean and slowly but surely reassembled it. But the main base here column was on its side and I worked on it in that position for quite a while then I got some help just raising it up to uh, about three guys we could raise it back up into the vertical position and then it was easy enough to put on uh, this and and even the ram uh, when I had about four guys to help me and some of it I don't remember exactly how I did it but the, the column was a problem I'm thinking now or the, the knee rather I believe I assembled the knee while it was laying on its side and could do that all by myself but with the greatest fear of damaging the ways uh, the V ways or or the gib uh, but uh, by shimming it and, and um, wedging and, and timber and wood and, and so on I got good alignment on it and you can see that this was originally sold by Don G. Beck in Chicago and I had bought equipment from them at the high school. That was a big machinery dealer years and years ago.
But I think the biggest help of all is to have a wife that supports you and shares your interests and, and doesn't uh, just want to buy uh, her 101st pair of shoes in, instead of you having something that, that you want or need in your basement. So hopefully you got support from your wife to, to, uh, to have these wonderful things like what I have down here. So I'm a fortunate man. And then the final question that I get all the time is how on earth are you going to move this out of here? Because now as you're getting older and maybe don't need it anymore, how, what are you going to do? Well, my answer to that is this. It's never coming out of this basement as far as I'm concerned. So when I sell this house, if I sell the house, the ad for the house will read something like this. Three bedroom home with basement. Fireplace, two bathrooms, three bedrooms and a Bridgeport mill in the basement. And this Jubal Kane saying, so long for now.